Hi everyone, welcome to our video series that aims to not only help you survive COVID-19, but thrive as a business. My name is Brett Smythe and I'm the founder of Engagement Consulting. Today we're bringing you the second video in a series of four that looks at how can you engage your most important assets, your employees. Today we're going to focus on 10 things that you can do to engage your employees starting today. Number one is communicate, communicate, communicate. I cannot overemphasize this enough, especially when you're working with a remote workforce. There's lots of different ways that you can do this from daily meetings with your team, um, you know, regularly checking in throughout the day, um, having virtual town hall meetings, um, and then also just things like emails and stuff. If you're a big organization, send a wrap up email at the end of every week, just so that your, your employees feel engaged and connected to the business. Number two is put health and safety at the top of your agenda. You know, we're in an incredibly difficult time with COVID-19 and employee safety and employee well-being is an absolute priority. As much as you, you know, want to restart your business and get back to business as usual, whatever that may be, you cannot do that at the expense of your employee well-being. You have to put your employees first. And as long as your employees feel that you're putting their well-being first, they'll go that extra mile for you. Number three is be realistic about the promise and the use of technology. Technology is fantastic. I mean, we've all been able to connect whilst working from our home offices, working remotely. It's absolutely fantastic, but it has its challenges. Today I was in the call, in the middle of the call, my video screen froze and I sat there looking like probably an idiot to our clients. We had to reset the call. These things are gonna happen, that's okay. You don't have to stress about them. Everybody understands. But what is useful is that you can work out for your business what works and what doesn't. Ask your employees for their feedback. What are the tools that they like using the most? Maybe give them some guidelines on how they can be effective, especially when communicating with your customers online. And then also just some guidelines for your team meetings. You know, if you use agendas, structured agendas for those meetings, they'll flow much more efficiently and much smoother and you can take advantage of the technology that we've got available to us. Number four is to take your employees' personal challenges seriously. We all have unique situations that we find ourselves in. Some people are worried about childcare, other people are worried about things like their medical cover. Meet them where they're at and provide them with the resources that they need. Number five is rethink time management and rearrange the workday if you can. Again, we're all in different situations. So, you know, especially if you're a parent and you're trying to balance work demands with having to teach your children from home, Think about how you can restructure the day as a, as a manager. Not everything has to happen at nine o'clock because maybe that's when people are busy doing homework or schoolwork. Um, think about how you can chunk the day so that people can be productive, allowing time through the day to, be, to get to personal things and then work things. And honestly, if some people are able to do their work at night, that's okay. It's not about how long people are sitting at their desks for, it's rather about productivity and what they're able to produce when they can. Number six is hone in on what's critical. In everyday work life, there's lots of fluff and noise and stuff that's not necessarily important. Um, when it comes to remote working, it's really important to focus people's attention on what you want them to achieve. Now, what do you want them to get done in the day? Um, and you can do that again with those morning check-ins where you set the objectives for the day and then check in again at the end of the day to make sure things have been done. But it's your job as the leader to really ensure that everybody focuses on the essential things for the business. Otherwise, people land up doing things that aren't important. Number eight is... Number eight is address rewards and performance metrics. The bar has shifted. COVID-19 has fundamentally shifted the bar. And the objectives and the KPIs that you said at the beginning of the year, many of them are no longer valid. Um, and your employees will be stressing about that. So think about how you can reset their focus. What are the things that you want them to focus on? What is success going to be judged against? And encourage them to go that extra mile. Help them prioritize their work. Look at their must do's in the days and their should do's and their could do's. And encourage people to find things that they can do that will add value to the business. Look at all those things that are your never ending internal list, those things that you'd love to get to but just never have the time and see how your teams can support you to actually achieve those. Number nine is acknowledge and tackle the gap in informal communications. 
We're social by nature and we love to interact and in an office environment, the opportunities when you're chatting in the lift or over lunch or at the water cooler or getting a cup of coffee, you know, those informal um, communication opportunities are invaluable to a business. It's often where the best business ideas happen and where those you know, ideas for innovation happen. So look at how you can encourage that informal networking within a remote working setting. Um, so things like you know, having fun quizzes as, an, as a company that you can do remotely, have virtual lunches or coffees where everybody makes their own lunch and you connect virtually, and it's social. There's no, no formal business agenda to it, it's just a social conversation. Uh, companies have been doing things where they introduce their kids to their employee, their other colleagues' kids. You know, it's it's these fun and formal ways of communicating just bring the human element out in all of this. And number ten, and probably the most important thing, is to make sure that it's a two-way process. Give people a voice and ask for their feedback. You know, what's working for them? What's not working for them? How can we be get better at um, communicating and engaging with them over this time? Um, your employees are the best source of information. They know how they can improve, where, they, where the company can improve, and uh, what channels are going to be most effective. So ask for that feedback. And you don't have to have a long survey to do that. It can be a quick uh, pulse survey that you send out, or even something as simple as a team temperature check, where in a meeting you ask everybody in a quick round robin format, how are they feeling, what are they worried about. Um, it just really helps bring you know, that we're all in this together and it just helps bring that sense of community forward. But give your employees a, vo a voice, ask for their feedback and encourage them to give it. So that's 10 things that you can start doing as a leader or manager to engage your employees today. They're simple, they're cost effective and they'll make a big impact. Um, we've packaged a toolkit, we've put together a toolkit for you that's available on our website, see the details below. Visit the site, download the toolkit and make sure that you not only survive this period, but you actually thrive as a business.